Hi, a couple of our subscribers and shed hacks have asked a few questions about the, the fittings and glues and so forth that we use in our projects and so it's probably best that I, I just do a generalisation on what we do or have used or might use even. Um, so we've got the metal brackets you use often in cabinet work, uh, often they have a slotted screw so you can adjust it for horizontal and vertical alignment, same there. Um, You've got the hinges, a range of hinges here, small and large. And look at this lovely one, this is for a house um, door. And often these are stainless steel so will never rust. Um, this one is definitely ferrous, so it's got some steel in it. Um, uh, sometimes they're anodized, so they've got electroplating on it in some way. Okay, so those, and then you get decorative hinges. Often you see these in little projects, they're not very expensive, about 35p for a pair. And the smaller um, sort of uh, hidden hinges you get. Often those sort of hinges, as you see in my train project, you can see they're hidden. They're actually called butt hinges. Alright, great. Um, and then you have other types of fittings. So you've got the wire nail type fittings, there's a bent one there, uh, a hooked nail for um, um, wiring, uh, little panel pins here or pins, often steel can rust uh, for very small box construction, small jobs, the larger construction nails, steel nail in that case, some uh, are covered um, with a galvanizing like this one or some sort of plating to stop them rusting but um, you know they're not used um, in situations where they're outside so they don't have to rust or they shouldn't rust. Uh, the, one, the nails that are used outside, as you can see on this magnet, are aluminium and won't pick up, but of course they will. So anything with a bit of steel in it tends to, to rust, corrode, that's the word, isn't it? Um, brass, used um, for lots of little jobs and screws and fittings like that. Little brass screw there. Quite expensive these now. Has a slotted end to it. They don't rust. They... Um, a non ferrous no iron in them at all then you get these um, self tapping screws often used for electrical construction work for computer boxes and all sorts of things speaker boxes and metal units and they're self tapping they cut their own thread as they go in to the second layer of material and um, they hold the two pieces of material together then you have large construction uh, screws here as a zinc plated wood screw for a large piece of construction work even furniture work some of the cheaper furniture will be screwed together and glued pop rivets which I'll go into in another video uh, they're used to fix two pieces of metal or plastic or even wood together um, from the shit hacks returning to our fixings video um, pop rivets used from one side of the material only Often you see these in buses, the panelling on buses, uh, where you can see the panelling's held in lots of little pop rivets, little points you can see. These are rivets as well. These are riveted from both sides, so it's where you can access the two pieces of material to clamp them on both sides. And that shape is normally then mould, uh, appeared on the other side. And you, it's called planishing. You bend over the metal to form the mushroom on the other side and it holds the two pieces of wood together, or plastic or metal, actually. And then your standard... Um, that's a six millimeter um, um, nut and bolt, and the nut's got a little bit of nylon in it called a locking nut, lock nylon. You see a little blue piece of nylon, really handy. So once that's on, it's very hard to get that off. Used in bike construction and car construction where things don't want to, to loosen again. If you haven't got a locking nylon nut, you can use um, a locking washer, which can be unreliable sometimes and they sort of have this serrated edge to it like that but um these are more old-fashioned now but these are very popular these locking nuts then you get wing nuts you get hold of them by hand great if you want to undo something by hand easily and where you're meant to undo something easily so again these are all a sort of semi-permanent um types of jointing um for kitchen construction these sort of a plastic blocks are used where you screw in one end and screw in the other and you get a quick fix in between two pieces of material. Great for cheaper cabinet work. I personally don't think they're very attractive 
but they're normally in situations where you can't see them anyway. Um, this for holding up pictures and clocks. Often they're put on the back of something to hold up a picture. Quite handy. That's brass, it won't rust, won't make a mark on the wall. Uh, going back to hinges, look at this very complicated hinge used in the kitchen cabinet. Sort of almost a dihedral type affair where the angles are maintained as it moves over its radius there. Very clever actually, I really think that's quite impressive. And these are used in kitchen cabinet construction. And then go, moving on a little bit, we've got um, other types of fixings. These are using beds, where one part is hidden in maybe the bed leg uh, or the side of a table, and then you screw in this using an Allen key type fitting um, to hold the two parts together, quite handy. Or they, they term these sort of knockdown fittings. I don't know why, I suppose you knock them together and quickly screw them together. Um, this is permanent. Once you knock on a piece of dowel and glue it in with a bit of PVA glue, um, often you knock them together and the fluting allows the glue to glue both surfaces together. The fluting is those little lines, can you see that? Allows the wood uh, to hold a little bit of glue around the edge. And they fit into a very tight fitting hole. There's a bigger piece of dowel fluted. Um, rod there, dowel rod. Um, for nuts and bolts, often you use these. If, the, if you don't want that bolt to come off, you'll put put a, a split pin in. There's a massive one there. You see these on cars, on the main uh, wheel components on cars, and that will, with a hole drilled in there, right through the bolt, that will never allow the nut to spin off. It's called a split pin. And the split pin works. You put it through the nut, and then bend it over. Bend it over back. And that will never let the bolt come off again. And then you get these self-tapping, large self-tapping screw there. Look, looks like that's used for conservatory type work. Or possibly even things like, uh, um, I've seen these used even in uh, the washing machine parts. Holding on some of the concrete blocks inside a washing machine. And furniture work I've even seen them in. Um, there's a fitting, this is often not seen. That goes into brickwork, it's called a raw plug. You drill a hole which is the same size as the, the minimum, minimum diameter here. You, you, you put force it in, in the wall. Hey Shed Hackers, we're turning to our fixings video. Talking about threads, there's a thread even on a light bulb you can see. The helical arrangement that you get. That's the thread, it's called a thread. There's a very coarse one there, there's a fine one. There's a very fine one there. And that one's used on metal construction work. Perhaps for holding down metal sheet on a, on a roof or the conservatory parts where you're screwing one piece of metal to another or even plastic to metal and it has a rubberized um, w washer there to stop it damaging the actual surface of the material. Going back to the um, raw plug which goes into brickwork if you want something which is much stronger and it's holding perhaps something much heavier to a wall or even a machine to a floor to stop the machine moving you can use these. Take off the nut uh, connect your um, machine, whatever it is, flange to it under the nut, put the nut back on, uh, it could be a pillar drill or something, and then once this is tightened in the floor, what happens is, as I tighten the nut, it opens up the taper there, can you see this opening up, it goes wider and wider and wider, Look, really opening up, and that grips the actual concrete or the it's the brickwork, the masonry work, um, in the wall or the floor. Really handy. And they have different sizes. You can get massive ones of these. There's another one. And these sort of things can be used in brickwork to hold up some very heavy shelving or even uh, holding up a structural piece of steel so it can support another part of the house. Really strong these can be. To break these out, you literally have to break out part of the floor or the wall. Um, simple nut and bolt there with a spacer allowing two pieces to be separated but still clamping them together so the spacer can move. You can see these in bicycles actually. Um, lots of different fittings have. There's the hinge again. Um, I picked up that I couldn't remember the name. Jubilee clips for pipes, holding on pipes on washing machines or hose reels where you see these connecting to the tap near the, at the end of the hose. Different sizes here. Um, I just often use inside washing machines even to clamp parts like that together. You have a massive one of those holding that onto the pump in the washing machine. 
uh, pretty good and again they're temporary aren't they because you can take them off there's the thread the sort of arrangement of the thread the nut there gripping inside there and it pulls it in inside quite clever um we've mentioned i think all of those you've got other clips you've got you've got for plumbing you've got these brass um fittings that allow um with the little um washer inside um, one piece of um, copper tubing connect to another. These little washers are called olives. Funny name, I don't know why they're called olives. Perhaps my son could find out for me. And they grip onto the, the pipe as you tighten it. And they're more modern ones, are these uh, are very fast gripping um, pipe connectors where you push it in and it, and it actually grips it within, within inside of um, an arrangement inside. Very clever. Um, quick gripping pipe connectors um, and of course these are the clips you see these in furniture and larger versions on doors and gates brass door bolts they are fitted together with little brass screws and so forth great uh, must mention the spring the springs are used actually to connect things um, often they're gripped on both ends and often you might see a rod running through the middle um, you might see a rod running through the middle and connecting the two uh, parts of the bicycle or car components but the spring allows the two surfaces on either end to still move okay and springs are used on all sorts of things you sometimes you wouldn't imagine where they're used and you see them you can even see them in um, hinge joints um, that one's been chromed that one or electroplated to stop it rusting yeah, clever stuff. Now, uh, they've got the brackets. We've talked about the brackets, haven't we? There's a big construction bracket for a floor joist or something. And then my cameraman's going to now turn to um, permanent fittings. Hi, Shed Hackers. We keep fitting Shed Hacks. So here's another example of fitting of fixtures. Um, this is a threaded one, and that's often used to hold on the bar, the weights of the bar. But there's a good example of the thread. But uh, Shed Hackers, you've got to keep fit. Okay, and then moving on a little bit, we've got, um, this is more permanent um, a type of fitting or um, connection if you like. And PVA, polyvinyl acetate, is used extensively in construction work. And you can see it's shown even on the, 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 the case here, um, the container, um, the glue being used with the wood, glue, wood joint. And the joint arrangement allows lots of glue to be used. That's why a joint is often used rather than just two bits just um, glued together like that um, at joints use. I'm going to do one on jointing later. Here's one called impact adhesive. There's various types. You can see um, it gives an instant bond, instant fitting, fixing, uh, fast drying, high strength, uh, connects all sorts of materials, woods, metal and plastics and composites. Um, it's non-porous, that means it doesn't allow water to run through it. No need for support, don't have to clamp it with a G-clamp or however it is toxic and it can it is flammable and it's not good for the environment so these sort of things really should be avoided um i think you have to be 21 to buy them now um but in some situations it's probably the, the best um uh, product to use and then you get these see these very commonly now for filling and gripping and materials together and they are extremely good sometimes um Again, hazardous, so not great for the environment. You can get much less hazardous versions of this that doesn't use any solvents. Um, but they are very, very useful for certain construction situations. Um, and you can see you've got different types of them, extra strength ones, waterproof ones, and so forth. Um, I tend to use the PVA because it's safe to the environment um, and it doesn't damage the materials in any way. Um, so that's PVA. Right, that's it. Thank you very much, Shed Hackers, and uh, I hope you've um, learned a little bit from this, this little bit of a piece of clip about uh, fittings. Okay, so um, this is on fixings being used, and uh, I thought it'd be a great example. Okay, so, sorry it's a bit dirty, my bike, but um, first we've got the quick release, so you can use that to hold the wheel on. You just pull it back, and it automatically loosens. And then you twist it like that and it loosens up. 
and then you just push it forward and it tightens back up. So then you've also got a clamp on the top. I don't know if you can see that. Got like a clamp there, which is just a bolt and then threaded on this side. Or you may be able to see the threads there. And then uh, coming down to the brakes here. So we have, this is a, a nut and on the inside of the nut, it's got an olive because hydraulic brake fluid goes through this hose and uh, that's sort of a plumbing fitting and then this over here is a split pin being used to uh, hold the brake pads in then if you can see that yeah, just about there yeah, yeah. Okay. and then uh, you have certain washers like these that crush down and take up a little space but also allow you to get it pretty tight. Okay, and then moving towards the back of the bike, we've got a quick release again, but here you can see there aren't as many washers on the rear. There's just one washer, and I think they're normally spacers, that's why. And then um, we may come back to you later, but on the chain, you've got a rivet that goes through and connects these outer plates with the inner plates. So these two are the outer plates, and that's the inner plate, and the rivet goes all the way through. And once you pop that out, you can't get it back in. But if I twist this, you've got a master link here, and that master link is two outer plates, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when you squeeze them together like that, you can then take the chain off, and uh, you can use that multiple times.